why DX systems fail, and more specifically, why they fail to control humidity over all load conditions. This is a very short, maybe 10 slide presentation to give you a brief overview to this topic. If you need more information, please comment or message me. All of my contact information is below in the video description. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Hope you all can hear me okay. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a typical layout for a standard DX HVAC system. I simplified it just to make the point of the dehumidification. So you have your mixed air coming in here, let's say 20% outdoor air, the rest is return, coming through your cooling coil, going through your supply fan, and blowing down into your space. So let's say on a design day, you have 80, 67, 80 degree dry bulb, 67 wet bulb coming into your HVAC system, which is a pretty common standard design temperatures. So the dew point of this air is 59 degrees. Here's what's important. To dehumidify this air, the cooling coil needs to be at a lower dew point than the dew point of the air. So if this cooling coil is, let's say, 50 degrees, um, you would probably get, well, let's say it's 45 degrees, you'd probably get about 52 degree dry bulb off the coil. So the, dew, the temperature of this coil is colder than the dew point of the incoming air. Thus, you will get condensation on the evaporator coil. It will collect down into your evaporator, and if everything's working right, it'll flow out of your building. So that's how we dehumidify air in a standard HVAC system. You pick up a few degrees of fan heat. This 55-degree air blows into your space. All is good. Your thermostat's set at 72. And if it's a design day, which means it's hot and sunny outside, there's a bunch of people in your space, there's a lot of load in there as far as electronics and stuff like that. 55 degree air is good, you want 55 degree air. What happens is on a part load day, it's October, November, it's cool and rainy, it might be 65, 70 degrees. This 55 degree air will make it very cold in the space. So what happens is the system will cycle back the cooling. So it'll either turn off the compressors or it'll turn down the compressors and elevate this leaving air temperature. So, and part low conditions, if you're not running the evaporator coil, you're not dehumidifying. And therein lies the problem with controlling humidity at all low conditions. To understand this scenario, you just have to understand part load. So very briefly, systems are typically designed for full load days, it's the middle of the summer, it's hot out, the sun's shining in all the windows, you have a bunch of people in the space, you want very cold air in that space. On a off design day, October, November, it's cool, it's rainy. If you blow very cold air into that space, you're gonna freeze everybody out. So the system will shut down, even if you need to dehumidify, because it's only looking at the space temperature, it's not looking at the humidity in the space for standard DX systems. And there's the problem. So the challenge is to design a system that will control temperature and humidity over all load conditions, okay? And normal systems aren't designed to do that. So let's look at the dehumidification sequence of operation when you have a true unit that's designed to control temperature and humidity over all load conditions. So I've added a, another component to this system we looked at earlier, which is called a reheat coil. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. We're also going to add, instead of a temperature sensor or a thermostat in the space, we're going to do a temperature and humidity sensor combo. So what that allows us to do is measure the actual dew point in the space. Dew point is a very good indicator of the actual amount of moisture in the space, much better than relative humidity. I happen to have a few videos on this YouTube channel that you can come check out if you're interested more in that topic. So if we go to our psychrometric chart, and I also have a couple videos on psychrometrics, welcome to check those out. And we draw a 55 degree dew point line. And let's say this represents our space. Anything in this area above that dew point will put the air conditioning system into what we call dehumidification mode. And so what happens? You've got 8067 entering your coil again. 
And to dehumidify the air, we're in deho mode. Typically, you're at full capacity on your cooling coils. So the capacities is full capac the cooling coil is at full capacity, excuse me. And you are dehumidifying and cooling the air as much as you can. Now, if you blow 52 degree air into your space on a day that's not design day, you're gonna probably cool everybody out. So what we do is we reheat. And here is where reheat coils come into play in a dehumidification system. So you have your air coming in 8067, cool and wet. We dry our warm and wet. We dry it down and make it cold, but then we have to heat it back up so that when it goes into the space, it won't freeze everybody out. That's the sole function of reheat coils in dehumidification systems. It's to keep everybody comfortable. All the dehumidification happens in the cooling coil. We reheat it with the heating coil, let's say to 68. These are arbitrary example numbers. You pick up a few degrees with the fan. You blow this 70 degree air into the space, which is relatively warm. And everybody's good to go. So now you're dehumidifying the air and not freezing everybody out. So I skip to this next slide here real quick. So if we look at this on the psychrometric chart and we plot our mixed air temperature entering the coil, which is 80 degrees, 67 wet. This line represents a typical cooling and dehumidification uh, cooling and dehumidification process on the psychrometric chart. We would leave the coil here, which is about 52 degrees for this example. We would heat the air back up along this line here using the reheat, and then we get a couple degrees from the fan heat arriving at our predetermined leaving air temperature, which is determined basically by the unit control. So just to recap, anything above this dehumidification or this dew point set point line, we would be in dehumidification mode. Anything below that, we would be in a cooling or heating mode down here. And I also have videos on that specific topic as well. So if we go back to our system, we want to control temperature and humidity over all low conditions, hot, sunny day, cool, rainy day, cool winter day, and let's say the outdoor air conditions range from minus 20 to 115 degrees. In our space conditions, we want to maintain between 72 and 80 degrees with low humidity. So what do you need in your unit at a minimum to make this happen? What you need is a modulating digital or VFD compressor, modulating reheat, modulating is the keyword there, and modulating heat at a minimum. You need these components in your HVAC system to control temperature and humidity over all low conditions. You also need a system that's designed to do this, that has the right controller and is designed to maintain the conditions you're looking for over all low conditions. So it's kind of a specialty thing. If you're going to you know, take the time and money to either correct a problem or design a new system that's gonna do this, Please don't skimp. Make sure to get the right stuff in your space and uh, you'll be much happier. We do a lot of renovation projects where the wrong product was purchased and it's not a lot of fun for anybody, especially the guy doling out all the cash to fix it. So if you want to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel here, if you found this useful. And we thank you so much. We appreciate all your support. Please like and share and hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.